For nearly two decades, The Ultimate Fighter has been the first stepping stone for aspiring fighters, with several of the show's winners going on to become champions and MMA legends. Finding success on the show, however, does not always translate to the long term. Today, we look at the victorious alumni that the company would rather you forget. Welcome to the INC, and these are the five worst Ultimate Fighter winners. Number five, Jesse Taylor. Jesse Taylor holds the rare distinction of being a two-time Ultimate Fighter failure. Taylor first came into the limelight in 2007, when he competed on season seven of the show off the back of a six and two record. After breezing through most of his opponents, Taylor was expected to make easy work of Amir Sadala in the final, only to be removed from the show following an altercation in a hotel after the show had finished filming. Taylor was given the chance to redeem himself against fellow season alumnus C.B. Dalloway, but a first round submission saw him released from the promotion, entering the sports abyss for the next decade. After a journeyman career on the regional scene, Taylor was invited back to the Ultimate Fighter to compete on the show's redemption season, pitting several of the show's most notorious alumni against one another for a final UFC contract. Taylor displayed much more maturity this time around, with wins over Hader Hassan and betting expert James Krause set up a match with Brazilian fighter Diego Lima. Taylor claimed a second round submission and seemingly righting the wrong of his first Ultimate Fighter tenure. Diego Lima taps out as Jesse Taylor finds the ultimate redemption here tonight. Taylor was briefly linked to a match with Belal Muhammad at Fight Night Sydney only for the match to be canceled after testing positive for clomiphene in an out-of-competition drug test. The scandal was too much for the UFC's already short leash, with the UFC releasing him from his contract having never fought for the promotion. Taylor would go 2-1 in the years after The Ultimate Fighter, and recently saw a match in Cage Warriors cancelled after being involved in a hit-and-run incident the day before the event. Taylor seemingly ending his career the same way it started. Number 4. Eddie Gordon The 2014 edition of The Ultimate Fighter proved an unwanted turning point of Eddie Gordon's career. At the behest of high school friend Chris Weidman, Gordon made his MMA debut in 2011, competing primarily for the Ring of Combat promotion where he amassed a 6-1 record, and doing enough to be cast on The Ultimate Fighter 19 that spring. Gordon had a workmanlike run through the competition, scoring a trio of decision wins including a match with Mike King regarded as one of the worst in the show's history. Gordon was in desperate need of a statement win if he wished to get the public back on his side. A first round knockout of Diego Lima in the final went a long way to doing just that. And not even sure if Diego Lima has recovered, he might be out! Eddie Gordon is the ultimate fighter! Damn, poor Diego had a rough time on The Ultimate Fighter. Gordon's first match came against fellow newcomer Josh Saman at UFC 181. Gordon used his superior wrestling to get the upper hand in the first round, before Saman creamed him with one of the most brutal knockouts of the year. Gordon would suffer a second loss in a labored showing with Chris Dempsey, before a third round submission to fellow Ultimate Fighter winner Antonio Carlos put the nail in the coffin. His tenure would only last four more months before he was one of several fighters released by the UFC in October 2015. Gordon attempted to revive his career by competing in the Ultimate Fighter redemption season, only to suffer a submission loss in the opening round before an ill-fated run with the PFL saw him lose three fights with the promotion. Gordon hasn't fought in MMA since 2018, winning just one of his seven fights since his Ultimate Fighter triumph nearly a decade ago. Number 3. Travis Luter Matt Serra used his win on Season 4 of The Ultimate Fighter to propel him to a UFC welterweight title but little is said about the other man who claimed victory that year. 
Making his debut in 1998, Luter entered MMA with much fanfare. The fighter had been a regular fixture of the ADCC World Championships and considered one of America's best jiu-jitsu practitioners of the time. Luter would fight three times in the UFC over a 12-month period, beating Marvin Eastman before successive losses to Matt Lindland and Trevor Prangley, after which the fighter rebuilt his confidence competing for the British promotion Cage Rage. In 2007, Luter competed in the Ultimate Fighter's comeback season, where 16 former UFC fighters competed for a title shot in their respective weight class. The likes of Scott Smith and Pete Sell had little answer to Luter's grappling, before a first round submission over Patrick Cote earned him a match with middleweight king Anderson, the Spider Silva. The fight had been intended as the first defense of Silva's middleweight title only for Luter to miss the 185 pound weight limit and the match being reverted to a non-title fight. Silva made the American pay for his missteps, neutralizing Luter's ground game before submitting his gassed opponent midway through the second round. Luter was given a second chance against Rich Ace Franklin at UFC 83. After nearly submitting the ace with an armbar, Luter's cardio again came back to haunt him as Franklin ramped up the pressure in the second before finishing the match with strikes. The UFC ended the looter experiment shortly after, making him the first Ultimate Fighter winner to ever be axed by the promotion. Looter would fight twice on the regional scene before announcing his retirement in 2019, his MMA career standing at 10 wins and 6 losses. Number 2 Colton Smith Season 16 is considered one of the weakest in the Ultimate Fighter history, and the failure of season winner Colton Smith proved to be the cherry on top. Smith embarked on his early career while still serving the U.S. Army, and had to receive special dispensation to compete on the show in 2012. Smith used a grappling-heavy game to overcome his early competition before claiming a unanimous decision over Mike Ricci in the show's finale. But his reputation as a dull and unsporting fighter put him on the back foot in terms of fan perception. You go in there and you touch gloves, and when you go in there and you try to use it as a cheap shot, then yeah, it's very disrespectful. Smith's octagon debut came against company newcomer Robert Whitaker at UFC 160. After dropping his opponent early, Smith offered little threat once Whitaker began stuffing his takedowns, before being finished by a left hook in the early stages of the third. Things would not get easier for Smith when he was paired against Michael Chiesa for the UFC's Fight for the Troops card. A back and forth grappling match ending with the former Ultimate Fighter King finishing his successor in the second round. Smith suffering the indignity of being finished in his domain. Smith would suffer his third loss in a 40-second submission to Diego Ferreira, after which the company released him from his contract in July 2014. Smith would be just one of six cast members signed to the UFC from that season, with only Neil Magny remaining under contract at the time of writing. Colton would retire in 2018 with a 7-5 record his penchant for fighting future stars continuing by losing his last match to future UFC welterweight, Sean Brady. Number 1. Nico Montano Nico Montano's career was so notorious, we made an entire video about it. Montano first made her bow in 2015, competing for a regional promotion in her native Albuquerque. But middling performances saw her fall to a 3-2 and two record and question her long-term future in the sport. This didn't shirk the UFC, who cast Montano for their all-flyweight season of The Ultimate Fighter in 2017. The Ultimate Fighter 26 was designed to crown the UFC's first flyweight champion, where Montano would face such megastars as Ariel Beck, Emily Whitmire, and... Oh, oh. So, oh, <clears throat> sorry, I got a little distracted there. Entering as the 14th seed, Montano surpassed all expectations with wins over Lauren Murphy, Montana De La Rosa, and Barb Honchak, before a decision win over Roxanne Mataferi saw her claim the title and become the UFC's first Native American champion. Immediately, Montano's reign was under scrutiny, as the fighter was accused of ducking a match with number one contender Valentina Shevchenko, 
repeatedly undergoing surgeries to push the fight back in the year. A clash between the two was finally scheduled for UFC 228, only for Montano to be hospitalized due to a botched weight cut and stripped of the title while still in the hospital. Things would not get better for Montano, as injuries and a six-month USADA suspension limited her to one fight over the next three years, moving to bantamweight where she lost a decision to future champion Juliana Pena. Montano's cord reached its breaking point in 2021, when she weighed seven pounds above the bantamweight limit prior to a match with Wu Yanan, forcing the fight to be canceled and Montano released from the UFC a few days later. Montano hasn't fought since her axing, last appearing in MMA circles promoting a film chronicling the dangers of weight cutting. Ironic, I know. And now, time for a few honorable mentions. Jonathan Brookins was dealt a rough hand following his win on The Ultimate Fighter 12, being released after losses to Charles Oliveira and, oh, you know, Dustin Poirier. Eric Montano failed to cash in on his Latin America win, going 9-7 and seven so far in his career. Everyone from the UFC's failed Ultimate Fighter China season. Yeah, we've got to do a video about that someday. This is the INC. Please like, share, subscribe, and ring the bell so you never miss a video. And another horrible Ultimate Fighter winner.